and welcome. We are so glad that you are joining us wherever you are at. We want to invite you to sing with us or just listen to these words and let these truths about God's goodness and faithfulness in your life sink in and maybe even bring to mind a memory of this past year where you have experienced the goodness and faithfulness of God in your life. My name is Tatiana. This is Nate and Timmy here with me, and we hope that you join us as we respond to God for who he is and what he's done for us. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so so good Every breath that I am able Oh I will see of the goodness
thank you so much for how you have shown us your goodness and your kindness and your faithfulness over and over again. God, I pray that you would open our eyes to see it so clearly, to see the ways that you are near us as our comforter, our provider, our deliverer. God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness, and we rely on you. We love you so much. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Happy New Year, everyone. If we have not met, my name is Andrew Kim, and I have the privilege of being on staff here at Kensington, specifically at our Troy campus. And I felt like that song that we just sang together, Goodness of God, is so appropriate as we look back on 2022, whether it was a hard year, whether it was an amazing year, maybe it was the best year ever for us. As we look back, I think every single one of us can see the fingerprints of God on the year and his goodness and his love for us. And so I hope that all of you had a great end to 2022 and you're having a wonderful start to the new year. Unless, of course, your children woke you up at 6 a.m., then you're probably on your third cup of this. But before we jump into the message today, what we also wanna do is we wanna take a moment to receive our offering. And as I look back on this past year, it truly has been amazing to see all the ways that God has used this community to impact people's lives, not just here in the Metro Detroit area, but truly all around the world. And so we wanna say thank you for your partnership, thank you for your generosity. And as I look at this coming year, I am expecting God to continue to do amazing things through this community. And so if you would like to partner with us financially, there are a number of ways that you can do so, and they're gonna be coming up on your screen right now and that you can scan the QR code and you can give in that way, but you can also text the word Kensington to 77977 and follow the prompts, and we can also give via the website or the app as well. And I've said this before, that this is truly one of the most generous communities that I've ever been a part of, and so we are so incredibly grateful for your open-handedness. And so today, the passage that we're gonna be jumping into and looking at is in the very last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. And years ago, when I was in seminary, one of the classes that I took was on this book. And I remember on the very first day, when our professor walked in, one of the very first things that he told us was that he said to us that if you ever have an opportunity to teach from this book, please do me a favor and remind people that it's not called revelations, plural, but rather revelation, singular, because it was a single vision, a single revelation that Jesus gave to his disciple John while he was in exile on the island of Patmos, which is a Greek island in the Aegean Sea. And part of this revelation was, were seven messages that Jesus wanted to communicate to seven different churches in a region known as Asia Minor, which is now modern day Turkey. And one of these church communities was in a city called Ephesus. And the message that Jesus wanted to communicate to this church is the same message that I believe that Jesus wants to communicate to us today, almost 2000 years later, as we start a brand new year. And this church in Ephesus was actually started by the Apostle Paul. And some amazing and truly wonderful things had happened in this community. One of them being was that even though they had gone through a lot of ups and downs, the people in this community refused to quit. They continued to persevere and endure. And this is some of what Jesus said to them. And it's found in the book of Revelation in the second chapter. And this is what Jesus said. He said, I know your deeds, which is a scary statement, but he says it in a very positive way. So he says, I know your deeds, your hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. And for many of us and for many of you, I know that 2022 was a difficult year. Maybe somebody that we deeply loved passed away. Maybe our marriage fell apart. Maybe we lost our job or one of our children went through a heartbreaking situation that we had no idea how to help them with. Maybe our doctor said that word that nobody ever wants to hear, cancer. But in the midst of all of this, we refuse to give up and we continue to persevere, we continue to endure, we continue to lean into God and to one another. And when I look back on this past year as a church community, we've also faced challenges and difficulties as well. And maybe for some of us, because of those challenges and difficulties, the temptation for us was to withdraw, maybe even to leave altogether. And maybe it was because of a decision that was made that we didn't understand or necessarily agree with. Or maybe somebody in this church community hurt us deeply. And so those thoughts went through our mind. 
but we said no to those impulses and we said no to those desires because this is our church community, this is our home, this is where we belong. And if that is you, I am so incredibly grateful that you are still here and that you call this place home and that you have persevered and endured. And this is what the people, this is what the Jesus followers in the city of Ephesus, what they had done. And so what Jesus does in these two verses is that he commends them, he praises them. And just some of the extraordinary things that had happened in this community. But this was the other side of it. Because just like every other church, there were areas where this community was unhealthy, where they were dysfunctional as well. And Jesus points one of them out. And he says this in verse four. He says, yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. And that's a profound statement if you think about that. And what Jesus was saying to them was he was saying, I know your deeds, I know your heart. And what I see is, is that you've forsaken your first love. You've abandoned your first love, which was their relationship with him. And maybe that's the case for some of us because maybe there was a point in our life, maybe there was a season in our life where we said to Jesus, Jesus, I will do anything for you. I'll go anywhere. I will give up anything. Even if it means living in the middle of nowhere, I'll do it for you, Jesus. But we don't say that anymore because now we were married, Maybe we have kids, we have a mortgage, we have a good job, we have money in the bank. And we have a sense, there's a sense of comfort and security in our life. And we're not willing to give those things up. And maybe we've been following Jesus for years, for a longer period of time now. And when we look at our lives, we see the same thing that happened with these Jesus followers in the city of Ephesus, that maybe we also see that we've lost our first love. And so then the question becomes, what do we do when we look at our lives and see this is the case. And Jesus actually tells his followers in the city of Ephesus to do two things, two things that we can also do as well to rediscover our first love. And these are the two things. Jesus tells us, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. And so the first thing that Jesus invites them and challenges them to do is that he says, remember, remember that time, remember that season in your life when I was your first love. And it's something that we can do as well because do we remember a time when this was the case for us? Do we remember a time when we loved him so much that we would actually wake up early in the morning before we would have to go to work, before we would have to go to school, before the kids got up for the day? because we wanted to spend time with him and we also believe that the God of the universe wanted to spend time with us. And those times weren't necessarily all magical or mountaintop experiences, but they infused us with a compassion and a love that would move us throughout the day. And this love and compassion would then emanate out from us to impact the people around us. Do we remember a time when Jesus was our greatest priority, more important to us than money or our career or success, even the happiness of our children, where he wasn't priority number 20 or 10 or even number two, but he was truly our greatest love. Do we remember a time like that in our life? But Jesus tells his followers in Ephesus, he doesn't just simply tell them to remember, he also challenges them to repent. And what it means to repent is that when we're moving away from Jesus in some area of our life, it means to stop, do a 180 degree turn, and then begin moving towards him. It's to do a U-turn. And what's so important for us to understand is that what Jesus tells his followers and what I believe that Jesus is telling us is that he says, he doesn't say to them, hey, I want you to feel what you used to feel. He doesn't say that, but rather he says, I want you to do what you used to do. And that he's saying, don't just remember when I was your first love and how you felt and what you did. Actually do those things again. And what would it look like for us if Jesus is no longer our first love, where we look at our journey with Jesus and we realize we've lost something along the way? What would it look like for us, not just to remember, but also to repent and to do what we used to do? And so one of the things that we want to do is we want to have a conversation. And I wanted to have a conversation with three of my friends and three of the people who are part of our community at Kensington as to how they are doing this and how they also plan to do this in 2023. So I am here with three uh, amazing people, three friends. And this is Peng Lee, who is right beside me. And she is also one of our elders. And she is you are someone who's had a huge impact on my life. And I'm so incredibly grateful for you. 
And so thank, thank you, you for, thanks for being here. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we also have Brian with us, and I so appreciated getting to know you, especially over the past year, and grateful that you're part of our community and just what you bring and your heart and your passion. And so appreciate your time today as well. Sure. My pleasure. Thank you. And then, of course, Sarah Rance, who is a part of our amazing student ministry team here at Kensington. And not only is she a great leader, but you have a ton of talents. You have a beautiful voice, but at the same time, you are a coffee connoisseur and maker <laughs> extraordinaire. So. Thanks for being here, Sarah. Glad to be here. And one of the things that I appreciate about every single one of you is that all of your journey with Jesus, some of you have been journeying with Jesus for uh, a short period of time, others of you for decades. And your stories, each of your stories are really extraordinary. But one of the things that I would love to hear is that, because today we've been talking about Jesus as our first love. And that if we've lost that relationship with him, what does it actually look like for us to rediscover that? And so for every single one of us, when we look back on our relationship with Jesus, whether it be a year, whether it be 20 plus years, can you actually remember a time when you look back at your life, a time when he was the greatest priority in your life or he was your greatest love? And what did that look like? How did you feel? What did you do to foster that relationship? Whoever. Anybody, anybody, <laughs> jump on in. <laughs> it's 2023. 2023. So I'll, I'll go. Uh, for me, that's, that's sort of a, a difficult question to answer, honestly. Because um, I think about, like, love. Like, it's it wasn't necessarily one of those ooey-gooey, right? Like, oh, I love you, Jesus, you know, type deal. So, yes, definitely that. But I also think of love as in terms of just, like, devotion and commitment, right? And so for me, kind of grew up in church, and so it was sort of something that I did. Uh, but I will probably say end of high school, early college, like that transition period, that's from with me when it probably became a little bit more personal, uh, I think. And so um, just fostering that commitment, right, being like on my own right away at school. And so personal Bible study, you know, really spending time in the scriptures and really like digging to understand like, you know, subject matters that were relevant to whatever I might be dealing with at the time. So those were moments where I really just, you know, I, I went to God first for answers, right? Instead of talking to friends and such, I, I really kind of sort of honed in on that. And so that's one of the ways that I sort of cultivated that commitment with Jesus being my first love, Jesus being like my source, being like that ultimate guide for me, so. Yeah, I love that answer. Mm -hmm. And when I think about love and what the scriptures talk, talk about love, this word agape, that's exactly that. It's not primarily emotion, but it's a deliberate decision that we make. And I love the fact that you said that. It's not just flowery, being on a mountaintop all the time, although it probably involves that, but it's not always that. And so I love I love that thought. I love that answer. Peng, Sarah, what do you guys, what about you guys? Yeah, um, I grew up a pastor's kid. Um, and so from the time I was born, I was in a church and I loved it. Uh, and I remember, I think, I had that mountaintop experience in a lot of ways growing up. And so as a little kid, there's still so many memories that are so vivid in my mind about what it looked like to just be absolutely in love with Jesus. And for me, it looked like walking into our church and the way that it smelled and the way that the light came through the stained glass windows and the people that just surrounded me. Um, I, I remember having extra grandparents because it just, mm -hmm. it felt like love. Everything about walking in the building every single week, um, it felt safe. And, and I remember just wanting to be there so badly. Um, and, and I never I never felt like I needed to be forced to be there. I just wanted to come and be surrounded with that community and with those people. And I, I can remember just this feeling of absolute, unconditional love and safety and and for me it, it meant that I, I wanted to continue to seek after why and, and why it felt that why 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 people wanted to be in my life the way that they did um, and and it's funny there's little things that you remember even as you get older about like just those little things that were so incremental in, in your faith and in and why you are the way that you are and one of those for me was Bible trivia was going to <laughs> Sunday school I know it's <laughs> But I remember, I remember standing up and they would ask us a question and every single week I wanted to have read through the Bible and I wanted to get to know it because I wanted to be ready to do yeah. Bible trivia. And, and I think so much of even now my faith, I learned in those early moments that were so beautiful and so special to me. 
So I guess one very important question is, did you win a Bible <laughs> trivia? I would love to say yes, but <laughs> I did not. You didn't. <laughs> Pastor's kid actually <laughs> trying to prepare for Bible trivia and was not the winner. Okay. But honestly, one of the things that I love that you mentioned is that one of the ways that we're able to really clearly see Jesus and Jesus shows up in our life is through the people around us. And that's what you're, what you're talking about is through community that Jesus was revealing himself and saying, hey, you know what, Sarah, I'm right here. Right? And so I love that part. And Peng, you've been on this journey for years upon years. You're an incredible leader, not only in the outside community, but especially here at Kensington. And so what has your journey looked like and when is that when was that season for you? Yeah, with me, you know, it has been a long journey. And I was brought up in a Christian family, right? But um, but I think looked at my life and uh, one of the time that really I think I feel so close with God was I think in uh, during a 2002 when I had my first business uh, career setback mm -hmm. and I was hurt and I was bitter, I was full of anguish and uh, I was in the desert and uh, wandering for a couple years. And during that time, I would cry out to God mm -hmm every day and throw my fist and uh, with anger and with worry and uh, with fear. And, uh, and I would just uh, pray for strength, for comfort or for clarity. Um, I would soak myself in the Bible every day and try to comprehend what's that mean? Yeah. How that apply to me? You know, what does it mean to uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart? and uh, lean not on my own understanding. Um, how do I submit to him? So I was just look, earning for his uh, presence and uh, experiencing him. And it was like he walked me through this uh, valley of a uh, shadow of death, mm -hmm. helped me process my grief uh, and evaluate my priority and uh, searching for my identity. And uh, it was a journey of uh, pruning, and it was challenging. And uh, God was building my characters yeah. through that. Um, but eventually, he set me free, free from the, you know, the early, uh, worldly uh, pursuit of fame, of fortune, and uh, he just, like, give me this indescribable peace and uh, trust in him. And he just, I feel he just, his care for me. Um, and looking back, that was such a blessing. Uh, it was a gift, a gift of being spent time with God and uh, just be embodied by his kindness, his gentleness, and his faithfulness, yeah. um, just to feel his love deep in my heart. That's so interesting that it's, you're talking about this incredibly difficult and painful season of your life and how during those times that none of us, all of us have experienced that, right? And so, and how we hate those seasons and we wanna do anything that we can to escape them. But yet in the midst of those seasons, in looking back, those are the times that we're able to see God the most clearly feel his presence in some of the most tangible and powerful ways. And there's some of the most beautiful seasons in our terms of our relationship with Jesus, but nobody would voluntarily say, hey, you know what, take me back to that. That's exactly where I wanna go. So it's so interesting and I love that you brought that up. Um, and even as I was thinking about in my life about what that felt like, I remember like years ago, like how I would connect with Jesus is I would take walks and just, I would see his fingerprints all throughout like nature and creation, even though I'm not really a nature guy. And it was just like really cool. And then I had kids and I was like, I would feel so like close. And then I had kids and all that got blown up um, because trying to figure out like, what does that rhythm look like? And my oldest is 11 years old and I'm still trying to figure it out. And so I, even for me, as I was thinking about 2023, what are, what are really practices that I could put into place that will allow me to begin moving towards Jesus again? Things that I've done in the past that I wanna commit to 
in this coming year. And so as you guys have been thinking about that, how, how do you see 2023? And what are, unless like you have Jesus already, you and Jesus are like right there, number one priority. And in that case, you should be sitting here or you should be leading our community. But if that's not the case, what are things that you really want to commit to this year that will uh, foster that movement towards Jesus? I, uh, the recent, the, uh, you know, growth teaching theory, mm -hmm. I love the example of when, how we pursue somebody mm -hmm. when we're in love, right? We want to be with them, can spend enough time with them, uh, and uh, wants to know them and want them to know us. And that's what I would like to, how to pursue God. And uh, it's just like renew your, your vow on your marriage. Mm -hmm. I want to renew my commitment to God and my love of God. And, uh, and it's not just by increasing my head knowledge, but to deepen my heart connection with him. And, and for me, it is just spend time with him more intentionally and enjoy his presence. Yeah. And uh, either through wherever he meets me, whether it's by worshiping mm -hmm. and reading and, uh, and or reading his words or in the nature, you know, um, it's not by a checklist, yeah. but it's just to experience his presence in my life and uh, to be in love with Jesus, but also live being loved. Mm. And, uh, and it's not a pressure or anything, but it's just be with him. Yeah, that's beautiful. What about you, Brian? So, so for me, I think the short answer is just continuing to slow down. Mm. So sort of like you talked about like when you had kids, right? Everything yeah. got blown up. So I don't have like the, the experience of having that happen because of kids, but just the busyness of life. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, growing up in church and then, then that, that pivotal moment where for me, going from like high school to college and then getting really involved in like serving both in campus ministry and then in church after that, I got really caught into being a more of like a servant and not so much just sitting in the fact that I'm also a son of God mm -hmm. and just kind of resting in that, right? And so really busy working for God and not spending time with him, not enough time mm -hmm. intentionally with him and just sort of sitting in that. So that's been for me one of the, the things that was I hate to say it, but sort of the most beautiful about the early days and like the, the lockdowns and stuff with the pandemic, right? Because it's forced everything else to stop. I mean, for the most part, right? It really yeah. pulled things back. So that gave me a lot more time to just to stop like you. I started going on those walks because we couldn't do anything else, right? So I go on these walks and then when I'm walking, I'm praying and talking to God. Um, but just pulling back, continuing to serve, but not getting so caught up in the busyness because I can be, a, I'm a very checklist oriented mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. So, it, like you know, college campus ministry, right? So I had friends who said, oh, you know, you're supposed to spend time praying. Okay. Oh, but the Bible says, seek God, you know, morning and at night, so you have to do it twice a day. So, okay. <laughs> so now I literally it was my roommate. Um, I won't name you, but you know who you are. My former college roommate told me that. I was like, oh, okay. So now I have to do this Bible study and prayer in the morning and at night and study because to be a good Christian. So um, got so caught up in all that stuff, good things, but it became so heavily focused on the meeting the checklist aspect of it and not so much mm -hmm. the relational aspect of it. So for me, just slowing down, really sitting in like, you know, that intentional, carving out that intentional time for just, whether it's me, I'm a coffee fan. So like <laughs> sitting at the, at the Starbucks to just like my Bible app or my Bible and, you know, frequently other distractions, just sitting in that and really just soaking in the words or in worship music is another way that I really connect. So those things, just slowing down and really soaking in it. And, and uh, yeah. I love that. Mm, what about you, Sarah? Yeah, I actually think going into 2023, I, I feel like I have to challenge myself a little bit um, to seek community again. Mm. Um, I think it was easy for me, especially during the pandemic, to yeah. take those steps back. But I, I don't think that was something that I ever struggled with, especially as an introvert. It's easy to find that space for myself. But it's really hard to um, to press into vulnerability and to allow others to come in and be part of this journey with Christ. Especially as we get older, I feel like um, having other people to pour into you and have other people to walk through 
um, the highs and the lows of life is so important. And I see it even with our students as they've really withdrawn from being around their friends and being around people who can build them up. And there's this immense loneliness that comes with it. Um, and even as I've spent some time over the last couple of days reflecting on my own journey and my own time when I found Jesus is my, um, my everything, that community is really what I kept coming back to is having people around me to push me, to challenge me, to, to be somebody that shows me that I am loved and, and that everybody goes to these seasons, I think is so important, but it can be really scary and it can be really hard um, even as I think about like coming into the church lobby again as we're walking around and there's people that I don't know and I think to myself that this could be an incredible relationship and this person could challenge me and this person could just help me see God in such a different way, but it's also so intimidating because you have no idea what that's going to look like on the other side. And I think that's the beauty of who God is, um, is that often we don't really see every bit of him and and we get to see more of him through the different people that he has created and, and through what he has created. And so that community is what really binds that together and, and helps me be challenged when, when I feel like I'm being complacent or when I'm just going through the motions or, or even when I'm like, no, that's okay. I can go home and I can do my thing. I can read my Bible. I can be in my quiet time and that's enough. Um, but the body of Christ is comes together to challenge each other, to grow so that iron can sharpen iron and so that we can continue to um, press into the hard things that, that God may have for us. Um, and so I think that's really where I find 2023 drawing me is challenging me into what it looks like to be in community through Jesus again. Yeah, every single one of you just shared such great ideas and great wisdom as to how we can lean into, into God. But what, as you guys were sharing, one of the things that just really came to mind is um, to do the things that we all talked about, that you all talked about. It requires us really to create room and to create space in our life. And we don't get something for nothing. Right? And so in order for us to really foster that relationship with Jesus, if we really want him to be our first love, and if he's not our first love right now, but we want to move towards that, it requires something else to get sort of moved out of that place. And so it requires time to do that, whether it's waking up in the morning, whether it's saying no to certain things so that we can say yes to other things. I think that is so important. And so I love that, that these are the commitments that we are making. And so for the people who are watching today, I think there are so many great ideas that you all mentioned, whether it's jumping into community and saying yes, whether it's like going to the going to your local coffee shop and just really just engaging with Jesus and just seeing that through people's lives and really through nature and just waking up, probably not waking up early for you, but like maybe <laughs> spending time. I know you're not a morning person. You're a night person. You're a night person and spending time with Jesus at night. All of these things are things that people can do, whether they've been journeying with Jesus maybe for 20 years, five years, or maybe they're just brand new to this whole Jesus thing. And they're like, who is this Jesus? And they want to take that step. Those are, these are all ways that they can do that. And so I love that. And so I appreciate you all being here. Thank you for having this conversation. And I think like what we just talked about is perfect because one of the things that when this whole idea of creating space and making room is so important for Jesus to enter in. And so one of the things that we want to do to really conclude our time together is that the band is going to lead us in a song and it's aptly titled Make Room. And so that is our heart, that is our prayer really for 2023, that we would make room for Jesus to enter in and so that we can begin moving towards him and rediscover our first love. Here is where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Here is where I lay it down Every lie and every doubt This is my surrender This is my And I will make room For you, oh God To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to Lord, I will make room for you, oh Jesus, to do whatever you want to, 
To do whatever you want to Have your way, Lord Have your way in us Here is where I lay it down Every burden, every crown this is my surrender This is my surrender And here is where I lay it down Every lie and every doubt This is my surrender our heart for all of us here at Kensington, and I believe that's God's heart for us in the coming year, that we truly would make room in our lives for Him. And so we are so grateful that you joined us today, and we hope that you have not only a great day, but really a great year as we begin this new year with Jesus. And we also hope that you'll join us next weekend because we're gonna be starting a brand new series called ID Renewal. And something that is so important for us at Kensington is that we would know who we are and whose we are, that our identity is rooted in Jesus. And so we hope to see you next Sunday, either in person or on stream. Have a great Sunday, everyone.